Okay, so I made these amazing cookies. My friend Anthony Saldana, call out to you. I had put a post out asking for like just something different, you know, Christmas cookies. And he put a post about a oatmeal white chocolate macadamia uh, cookie. And that just, that grabbed me. Now, if you know anything about me, um, I'm a food critic. And so I have this part of me that I can never take a recipe and just use it. Like I have to switch it up, that's just my nature. So I'm always mentally making thing up, things up in my head, like making them over like somebody's hair or their makeup, not that mine is good. I just came home from the gym this morning and I, I haven't done my hair, but recipes, I'm always like, eh, they could use this or maybe I would tweak it with this. Yeah, Vernie, do you know Anthony? Did you just tag him? Yeah, I meant to tag him. If you know Anthony, ta tag Anthony Saldana in here. He's a, he's a friend of mine, anyway. So um, he posted this cookie and I just thought, oh, those flavors sound great. So I'm gonna give you the recipe that, um, that he gave me and then I'm gonna give you my tweaks. And my tweaks are pretty special. So he got this off of a website. Gosh, I don't even know which one it is, but you can Google um, oatmeal cranberry white chocolate macadamia chip cookies. I know everything's backwards because I've got it on selfie mode, but maybe Anthony, what I'll do is I'll post the link for the original recipe in the thread when I'm done with the video. That way you can come back and find it. Then I will give you my additions to this recipe. And hint, hint, I think I, I teased ya in the beginning. There's a little grand manier. And, Redlands oranges. So if you don't know, I live in Redlands and if you're not from California, Redlands is in the Inland Empire and we are known for our citrus. So our whole city is revolving around the orange. So these are fresh off the tree. So I will say, um, if you're making these cookies, try and get the best quality oranges as possible because we're using the zest of the orange and I'll go into that more later, but that's where all the flavors, all the oils are in the zest. So you don't want to be squeezing juice in there. You know, it, that's watering down your recipe. You're going to zest the orange zest. You're going to zest it. And I'm going to show you how. So that's where the flavor is. The Grand Manier is just my little addition. So for those of you that don't drink alcohol or have scared feelings about alcohol in a cookie, let me just give you a little 411 on, on alcohol. So when you're using your vanilla extracts, your different extracts, those are alcohol. They have an alcohol base to them. Um, there's, you can buy uh, alcohol free. I'll try, let me see if I, I think I have one up here somewhere. Um, yeah, this one, this is just a pure vanilla flavor. It's not as good. You want like a really good, um, extract that has alcohol in it and preferably bourbon but um, you're gonna put such a small amount there's not these are not alcoholic cookies you're not your kids aren't gonna get drunk on them this is a basically you're using Grand Marnier which is an orange liqueur you're using the essence of the flavor the alcohol will cook out and you'll be left with this delicious I hope I can get it open <laughs> delicious flavor if you don't want to do Grand Marnier in here you don't have to I'm not gonna drink it, but I'm just gonna smell it. It smells amazing. And if you like oranges, it's just something nice. To, I cook with it a lot. Um, I don't know that I've ever had like had a drink of it, um, but I use it to cook. So um, I'm a person who's always used alcohol in my cooking. Um, I just like the flavors that it imparts. But again, if you don't wanna add the Grand Marnier, you don't have to. Your cookies are not gonna taste terrible. I did a batch without the Grand Marnier, um, with just the orange zest. And they're delicious. Like these cookies are epic. They're simple. They're drop cookies. Mm, sorry. They're an oatmeal cookie with white chocolate, cranberries, and orange zest, basically. Now I'm chewing. Sorry, I didn't mean to be rude. Okay, so what you need for this recipe, and this recipe I doubled, but I'm not going to do it for you guys today. I'm just going to do it directly as it says. So it's a half a stick, a half, I'm sorry, one stick, half a cup of butter, unsalted. I had done a post about a few days ago about butter and I wanna to talk to you about butter. Um, European butter has a higher butter fat. So butter matters. Don't use country crock for the love of God. Don't use that in your cookies. They won't be fluffy. My husband's down there, he loves country crock. It's terrible. Honey, shh. Stop, 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 stop. No country crock. I won't even allow it in my house. 
Seriously, he puts it in the car, I take it back out. It's hydrogenated crap. Do not use it. So um, European butter is going to make a better cookie. It's higher butter fat. Um, American butters have more water in them. So they just don't have that lusciousness that, um, that a European butter has. Plegra is my, one of my favorites. I posted a, a Kerrygold on there and I love Kerrygold. Hi, David, I know you love cookies. Um, yes, Joanne, anything with citrus. So please use good butter. It makes a difference. If you're making 8 billion cookies and you, you, know, you can't afford it, I get it. Um, but if you're making a small batch of something special, to me, this is like a special cookie. This is like, I wouldn't even give these to the kids, not because I put grandma in, it, in them, but because they're like, they're kind of gourmet, in my opinion. And kids just like simple flavors. So save these cookies for your friends if you're entertaining, maybe give them as gifts. Um, anyway, so use unsalted because you want to control the salt because I'm going to be adding salt to it. But use unsalted in your baking. I think that's the best way to go. So I like Plegra, but whatever you like, a Euro you're looking for a European style butter, okay? So this recipe calls for, um, it's gonna be one stick or a half a cup of butter. So this is two right here, this, this is a full pound. So I'm just gonna cut it in half. And this is cold. I'm not warming this uh, room temperature butter up. I'm not gonna you know, bring it up to temp like that. Um, Cause this is a flaky cookie. You want the butter to be cold, okay? So I'm gonna put this in my KitchenAid, get rid of that butter. And to this, you're gonna do brown sugar. It's one third a cup of packed light brown sugar, and then one third a cup of granulated sugar. And again, you can tweak your recipe if there's something you don't like. If you wanna, you know, dark chocolate in this would be amazing. Dark chocolate and orange are phenomenal. So again, Feel free to tweak. I thought about taking this cookie and doing, instead of white chocolate chips, doing dark chocolate chips, instead of cranberries, doing dark dried cherries, and then adding Grand Marnier to that and the orange zest. So I'm all about flavors. And orange and Szechuan peppercorn, I don't know if you guys have ever tasted that combination, but like a dark chocolate cookie with orange and Szechuan, if you know what those are, peppercorns, oh my so unusual flavors, okay? I can't help that I'm just a bougie gourmet. I just, I can't help it. But I like Spam. And I did my Spam fried rice, which was delicious. So another, uh, a third a cup of granulated. So a third of brown, third of granulated. And I will put this recipe, I promise, in the link when I'm done. Okay, so you're gonna use your, your paddle attachment if you have a KitchenAid. This is my new KitchenAid that my husband bought me. I absolutely love this, this guy. Ugh. It's, um, it's the six, six quart pro 600 and I got the seven quart bowl, the glass bowl. I hope you guys, can you see it? I can never tell. Hey Michael. So I'm just going to turn that on. I'm just going to cream that up and, and it's cold butter. So it's not going to get all like, you know what I mean? It's not going to get all creamy, 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 but trust me, the colder butter in this cookie is better. And again, I had some discussion about that on an earlier post. Do you use room temperature butter? Do you use cold butter? Different cookies, you, for me, use different applications of your butter. Some you want cold, some you want room temp. Um, totally, I'm not, and I'm not a baker. Hey Maddie, I'm not a baker. Like, I hate to bake. I'm getting into it though, but um, not into it too much. So if you, I don't know if you guys can, can you guys see inside this bowl? Put a thumbs up if you can see inside. Hopefully you can, it's not hard to tell. Um, it's starting to look really good. So I'm gonna turn that down. Trick, one egg. Don't crack the egg in the bowl because if God forbid you get a shell, you're gonna, somebody's gonna be like, oh. you don't want that. So I'm gonna go ahead and crack an egg into a little dish so that I can put that in separate. And I'm gonna turn my KitchenAid back on and I'm gonna add my egg. Okay, and you're just gonna beat this till it's combined. Now, I wanna talk about extracts and flavorings. This is where we're gonna get fun here. So I think it's really important to spend money on good extracts and flavorings. By that, I mean, I'm just gonna give it a quick, that looks beautiful. I'm not a big fan of the grocery store variety extracts. Why? Because they're just, they're not made well. They're not gonna get a high quality 
um, vanilla flavor from them. In fact, um, I had posted a recipe. I make uh, some of my own extract and it's really simple. It's vanilla beans, you slit them, you put them in with some good bourbon and just let them sit. Um, easy peasy delicious so and it makes a great Christmas gift too if that's something if you're looking for somebody who just has everything you can make your own you can google it make your own vanilla extract wrap it in a cute thing and you know what I mean but anyway I digress so back to flavorings what I'm using in this one is I'm gonna use a good vanilla now I like this cooks brand it's a pure they're calling it this is their cookie vanilla extract so it's a mix of the finest, their select, Tahitian and bourbon vanilla beans. So I really like this flavor. Um, it makes really good cookies and I use this in my farmhouse cookies that I posted later. Um, it's the Madagascar and uh, Tahitian vanilla beans. So it's called Cooks, C-O-O-K-S. And I think I got this at Jensen's. So you just can probably look on the website um, anyway. And, and there's alcohol in this. So, you know, I'm just saying. We're going to go ahead and add one teaspoon of vanilla. Now, another thing you could do before I do this, because I want to talk to you about this as well. For those of you that just love vanilla, I love Mexican vanilla. So I get this vanilla bean paste, which is really potent, great in cookies. I'm not going to use it today because I want the Grand Marnier to really be the star. But if you love vanilla, this is going to have um, vanilla bean specks in it. And it has a spectacular flavor. This bottle is $26. I mean, this is, you know, this stuff is expensive. But I keep it in the fridge. Makes great cake. Um, if you're going to do, like, flan or, I mean, anytime you want, like, vanilla flavor to shine, I suggest using this vanilla bean paste. And, again, I love the Mexican vanilla bean. It's so good. Ole! Okay, so we're going to go ahead and add a teaspoon of this vanilla extract. That's my flavoring number one. Now, vanilla highlights other flavors. Um, I did a chocolate cake not too long ago, and I did vanilla, and people were saying, why are you doing vanilla if you're putting all this chocolate in it? Vanilla highlights chocolate. It's like the sidekick to any flavor. So even though I'm going to add some Grand Marnier, I still want the vanilla in there. It's kind of like the, the secret flavor in there. Okay, so we're gonna do a teaspoon of each. All right, so good. And Grand Marnier, again, is an orange liqueur, okay? Mm -hmm. So good. All right, so I have my wet ingredients in there. I'm just gonna blend that up really quick. I've got my a third a cup of white sugar, a third a cup of brown sugar, um, one uh, half a cup, or was it, is it one cup? It's a half a cup of butter. See, I, I double these, so it's, I keep forgetting. It's a half, it's one stick or a half a cup of butter, and then it's your vanilla and then your Grand Marnier, okay? So now I'm gonna start adding my dry ingredients, which is, uh, I'm gonna use flour. It's one cup of flour and one cup of rolled oats. And the oatmeal, it's just so nice in it. It really is. So for those of you that aren't really big fans of oatmeal cookies, it's just, they're delish. Okay. I'm going to turn this on slow because I don't want to have flour everywhere. And you just kind of do it slowly. Let it incorporate. Dip it in. It's one of those things where you have to have patience. I'm not a patient person. I've learned that about myself. Like I have zero patience. And I usually just dump everything in and then it just flies out like that. So just baking is one of those things you have to have a little bit of patience. That's probably why I don't like it. Hey Matt, how are you? Merry Christmas. But these cookies are worth sticking around for to find out how to make these. They, they really are special. Okay, so next we're going to add our rolled oats. And I just buy whatever brand, doesn't matter. And you want a cup of those as well. Okay. Just make sure it's level, and I'm going to add those in slowly. Let that mix up. I need a half a teaspoon of baking soda. That's going to help with some leavening. Baking soda and baking powder do that. So I need a half a teaspoon. I need new um, kids are always playing with my measuring spoons. Okay, so I got a half a teaspoon of that. It calls for a little bit of cinnamon. And I feel the same way about your spices. 
as I do extracts. Buy the best quality. Try not to buy like just the grocery store varieties. They just aren't that great. Um, this is an organic cinnamon. It's it's a nature, simply nature choice, organic. Just find something good, you know? If you, if you sniff it and it doesn't have that like really cinnamony smell, it's not good. You want, it's calling for a half a teaspoon. I'm just gonna eyeball it. I don't want a lot of cinnamon because the this recipe does not include the oranges that I'm putting in this. So just a hint to flavor. And next I want some good kosher salt. And this one calls for um, a half a teaspoon. So there we go, that looks good. And I want them to be kind of salty because I want to offset all these delicious flavors. And I feel like salt always belongs with sweet. And that's just my thing, I'm not a baker, but to me, hey Chris, uh, salt just elevates sugar and it kind of balances it. I hate when I bite into a cookie and it's so sweet or cake or pie or candy. To me, salty sweet is kind of where it's at, but that's my taste profile. You may not like that. So um, this one's looking like it's got a lot of leaves on it. So these are fresh oranges from my neighbor. Uh, thank you, Nancy, if you're watching. I'm gonna zest about one uh, orange. Now, this is a smaller size orange, it's not huge. Just use your, you know, just use your, uh, your, uh, I can't think, I can't do two things at once, apparently. Use your, what, what, what word am I searching for? Use your, what's the word? I don't know. Use your opinion. No, that's not even it. Use your, what, 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 what word do I want? Gosh, when you get old, you just lose your words. So if you don't know what this is, this is a microplane. Okay, this is how you're gonna zest your orange. And I'm just gathering it in the top here. You don't wanna go down to the white part, that's bitter, okay? Microplane, airplane, <laughs> alien. But the smell of this is like amazing. Like if you have a stinky house, just zest an orange, like seriously or a lemon or a lime, okay? So you just wanna go around your piece of fruit, whether you're cooking with it or you're gonna bake with it, and you wanna get all that beautiful zest. This is where all the flavor is. It's not in the juice, it's not on the inside, it's, on, it's in this beautiful peel, and it's all the oils that are in here, okay? And do not, go, don't keep, look, don't keep going down to the white, okay? You wanna just get it. So here's all my peel. I'm gonna just get that in there. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. All right. And this cookie uh, batter looks like nothing in here because I have such a small batch and I have such a huge bowl. But I wanted to make it for you so you can see how it's done. Next, it calls for white chocolate chips. Again, get a good quality. You're a deli. Um, you know, white chocolate does not have chocolate in it. So um, you want to find one that's uh, a good quality. Um, this is Ghirardelli. I just cut out the ingredients, I think. But this is made, it doesn't really give you the ingredients. Oh, it's made with um, whole milk powder. So it has more vanilla extract in it where a lot of the cheap ones are just like vanilla flavoring and they just don't taste as good. So you want a cup of the white chocolate chips and I would for sure double this, no matter what, double this recipe, because I mean, these are so good, you don't want this small amount. But I already made these, so I don't want to have a ton extra, because I keep eating cookies. I spent two and a half hours at the gym today, and it's for nothing. I'm just gonna be back, and back here, back, eating cookies. You want dried cranberries? Okay, you can use craisins if you want to, whatever you want to do. I like Trader Joe's, makes a great dried cranberry. And I'm, let's see what they want, how much? Half a cup of dried cranberries, okay? And again, I just eyeball stuff. You know, you know. I think now if you're watching my videos that I'm not an accurate person. That's why baking for me doesn't always go so well because I don't really like rules. I, if you tell me I can't do something, I'm like, oh, hell yeah, I can. So, you know, I'm just experimenting. And then you want uh, roasted macadamia nuts. Okay, this is what gives you that really yummy flavor in there, that nut. And again, it's a, what is it, half a cup? Yeah, half a cup. And I like to keep them pretty big. These are already like quartered. Because I want that chunk. I want that, that crunch, okay? And that is it, you guys. I'm just gonna quickly 
I'm just gonna do that, I know it's loud. Okay, so let me just go over it with you again, for those of you that are just tuning in. It's, these are oatmeal, cranberry, white chocolate, macadamia nuts with Grand Marnier and orange zest, okay? So it's a half a stick, um, or half a cup, one stick of unsalted butter. We talked about good butter. One third a cup of white sugar, one third a cup of brown, light brown, one large egg, uh, a teaspoon of vanilla, a teaspoon of Grand Marnier, or if you don't wanna have it or you don't have it, just omit it. It doesn't have to be in there. I've made it without it, it's delicious. One cup of flour, one cup of rolled oats, one half a teaspoon of baking soda, a half a teaspoon of cinnamon, a half a teaspoon of salt, one cup of good quality white chocolate chips, a half a cup of dried cranberries, and a half a cup of macadamia nuts. That's it, folks. Super easy. It smells like heaven in here. I don't know if you guys can see inside the bowl. I'm just going to go ahead and, you know, just lift this up so you can see the mix. Lots of beautiful colors in there. And all you're going to do, literally, is, I'm going to lick my finger. I could literally just eat this batter. I'm gonna live dangerously, I don't even care. Oh my gosh, I just lifted up my finger. It's so vibrant, that's a good word for it because the orange flavor is so forward. The cranberries are tart, the white chocolate chips are so sweet, the macadamia nuts are buttery and crunchy, and there's that salt in there. So it just, it, it hits all the notes. It's a very mature cookie. I like to take an ice cream scoop. This is a drop cookie, super easy. And I always line my baking sheets with silpat or silicone, okay? So I use the industrial thicker cookie sheets. Don't buy anything non-stick. If you've got non-stick, throw it away. Make sure penis small. Did you see the article I posted <laughs> on stick? Non-stick makes your penis small. It's shrinking the world's penises. So get rid of it. We don't want to use it, right? Okay. So these are just, uh, you can get these at Smart and Final, you can get these at Costco, these are great. So you're just gonna take your cookie scoop and it's gonna give you a perfect cookie and I'm just gonna give them a little bit of space to go in. They go in 350, I believe. I use convection. Um, if you don't have a convection setting on your oven, that's okay, just keep an eye on them. Always put your cookies in the middle, put the racks in the middle and I kind of stack them kind of close together because they're thin. Hey, Leon. That's a jelly roll pan. It's a cookie, it's a cookie sheet. It's a baking sheet is what it is, but whatever you want to call it. And you're just going to put them on like this. You're going to put them in the oven. Where's my recipe so I can tell you how long. And again, I will put this in here. Um, 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 350, two inches apart, 12 to 15 minutes. They are such a great cookie, such a great gift. Um, they're... They're beautiful, they're delicious. You could drizzle a little chocolate on top if you wanted to to make them even fancier. You could take um, dark chocolate if you want. I mean, there's so many things you could do, but they're great just the way they are. Wrap them up with a bow. Merry freaking Christmas, right? I mean, hello, it's, it's great. Um, one more thing I wanted to talk to you guys about because people were asking about my farmhouse cookies. So let me move this out of the way really quick. So. I didn't do a video on these because it's so laborious. I mean, you know, you're, I make the dough one day and you know, it's, it's just a lot, but I don't do royal, royal icing. I do buttercream and I think I have some here that I'll just pull out. So these cookies are a farmhouse sugar cookie. And I don't know if you can see how thick and fluffy they are. So, I make cookies for taste, not just look. I think my cookies turn out beautiful. They're, they're like very like rustic looking. Royal icing is that icing that's very thin, it's powdered sugar, uh, corn syrup usually, and it just, it glazes, it gets glossy and it's very thin and it dries hard. You know when you get like a, a decorated cookie, that's what they're using, and it's beautiful. You can make beautiful designs, and I love the way they look, but I don't think it tastes good. I'm sorry, I just, it's nothing to write home about, and I'm all about butter. So I make these every year. These are a um, sour cream and butter cookie recipe. And I've, I've posted this the last few days I've been posting it. But see how thick they are? And they're fluffy. I mean, they're, they're not hard and crunchy. I guess I'll take a bite just so you can see. Mm. See? They're fluffy, right? And then the butter cream frosting, it sets up 
I mean, it's kind of hard, but it's um, powdered sugar, butter, um, salt, whipping cream, and then whatever flavors. Now, I do three flavors in my in my buttercream, and you can't tell that they're in there. What I'm using is I'm using this cookie extract that I talked about earlier, the Cooks, which is a Madagascar and a Tunisian vanilla. I also use almond and coconut. Um, people think that's weird. I know, and I did post the recipe for this frosting that I'm using, and it calls for, to me, I love this. It calls for one cup of salted butter. Now they're using salted. I use unsalted and salted myself, but do what you want. One cup of butter, softened, not melted. Four cups of powdered sugar, four to six tablespoons of heavy whipping cream, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, one teaspoon of vanilla, uh, whatever your choice, and you could use whatever vanilla, but do something really good. You know, when you're talking about a frosting, all you're really tasting is butter and whatever extracts you're putting in. So don't buy like McCormick and Schmitz or whatever that is. It's just, just a boring, buy something special. Um, it's a half a teaspoon of coconut extract and a half a teaspoon of almond. And it's phenomenal. It's not like it doesn't taste like coconut. It doesn't taste like almond. The three together are very harmonious. You taste it and you're just not sure what's in there. It's just special. So I highly suggest you try this frosting. And even if you're kind of skeptical about it, it's delicious. And then you want to use gel food coloring. And the reason you want to use gel food coloring is because what um, the liquidy one that you get in the grocery store uh, will water down and they have a bitter um, taste to them. I hate food coloring, especially red. It's very bitter. So I buy Wilton paste, uh, gel paste um, food coloring and you can get that on Amazon or if you have a, a, a decorating store, a cake decorating store by you and you just use like a toothpick and you're just, you know, you just kind of keep adjusting the color, but their red doesn't have that bitter taste to it. So that's what I suggest. If that's, if you just have the regular ones at home, just, just be careful with them. You don't want to put a lot, any more than like four to six um, squeezes of that, whatever color, it's going to start changing the flavor and it has a weird flavor. So I posted this, I can post it again, or you can message me if you want the recipe. This is great buttercream and I just, I really feel like cookies, <laughs> they need to be epic and delicious. And so, although my cookies aren't the prettiest cookies you're going to see with sugar cookies, this cookie, I've been using it for years. I love my friend Nancy Hahn years ago, um, gave me this recipe and I love the sour cream with the butter and it's just a really nice cookie. So um, I hope you guys are having fun with your baking. I think baking is one of the best gifts. My friends, this is, I bake for my friends. It's like give it as gifts. And um, it's just my thing that I do. And again, I'm not the best baker. It's not something that's like, ooh, Trisha's got the best cookies. I'm sure nobody's saying that. But I do it from, you know, from the heart and I make a ton of them because it's Christmas and that's what you do is you just make a gazillion cookies and, you know, you got to find people to give them to because, you know, I don't want to be eating them all. Because they're so good. Anyway, Merry Christmas, everybody. Hope you enjoy your season and I'll see you soon. Don't forget to go to my Foodie Princess YouTube.